change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and today I want to talk about something that happened to me that really demonstrated the value of little steps and how little steps can have a huge impact on your life, even though they seem insignificant when you imagine their impact. So what happened? I was running towards the monument here in Bennington, and there were quite a few people out because it's Memorial Day. And off in the distance, about 200 meters away, on the sidewalk, I saw what looked like two people coming at me, each with a dog. So I started planning what to do 200 meters away. Should I cross the road to avoid interacting with these dogs? Because it's two people and two dogs more likely to have some kind of negative interaction. Or should I just get off the sidewalk and go into the road? But there's a lot of traffic because it's Memorial Day, a lot of people going to the monument. So as I'm processing what the best plan of action is, I've run another 100 meters. And now, even though I still can't see clearly, I realize they're not dogs because they look really uniform. Ah, they're two people walking two bikes. So each person has a bike and they're walking their bikes down the sidewalk, which makes sense because the sidewalk is really old. There's giant maple trees. The roots uh, make the, the sidewalk really uneven. So not a sidewalk you want to be biking on. Okay, now I don't have to worry about dogs. So I'll just keep running straight. And after this sinks in over the course of another 50 meters, I realize, wait a minute, those aren't bikes. It's an older woman with an older man, and he has a walker that has two big wheels on it. So it's kind of like a reverse wheelchair, and he's rolling that down the sidewalk. And after I passed them and got further away, what occurred to me was that 200 meters ago, I was anticipating danger and was ready to course correct to avoid something that my brain predicted was dangerous. Now, I didn't have any fear because I was far enough away to not actually be physically engaged with these dogs. But my brain was saying, it's going to get bad. I'm predicting that there is danger ahead. So let's make a course correction now to avoid the danger. So it started with the avoidance of pain, the avoidance of danger. But then as I stayed on the course, it became curiosity because now these are bikers and maybe I know them. I'm on the board of a biking group here in town, so maybe these are people I know. So I got curious. And then as I get closer, that curiosity changed into compassion. As I saw this man with a military hat on that said he had been in some war, who knows, maybe Korea, I guess, uh, coming down from the monument, pushing this roly thing. And I just had this feeling of compassion. And had I course corrected, had I gone to the other side of the road and not looked in that direction again, because now I have new stimulus on the other side of the road, my brain would have continued to believe that I had avoided danger. And I've noticed this throughout my life, that my brain makes predictions about things that it thinks are likely to be happen, and it's pretty sure that there is danger ahead. And that's a smart prediction to make, because if you're wrong... Well, you're just on the other side of the street. But if you don't predict danger when there could be danger and you're wrong, you could end up hurt or dead. So the brain errs on the side of being overly cautious in its predictions. That's how we stayed alive thousands of years ago. Our ancestors that didn't predict danger in their future, they got killed more often than the ancestors that did predict danger more often than it actually occurred. We got the genes of the cautious people. So we have what they call a negativity bias. We see danger more often than it actually occurs in our environment, and this keeps us safe. But it also keeps our world quite small. Now, this is useful in a primitive environment where there really is danger all around you, but now, in 2019, that danger largely does not exist outside of our own heads. Now, sometimes it does, but most of the time we mispredict. So, back to little steps. Why are they so important? Because I kept taking little steps toward something that my brain was warning me in advance was going to become dangerous, but each little step I took, I got more information 
that that prediction was wrong. So the power of little steps isn't so much that you're making progress. The power of little steps is that each one of them gives you a little bit more information and helps you see reality a little bit more clearly. And because they're little steps, you don't have to worry if the thing in front of you actually is dangerous because you're not jumping at it in one big leap. You're slowly getting closer to it. So the next time you see something that your brain says danger ahead and you're about to change your direction, take a small step towards that supposedly dangerous thing and then another and then another. And long before you're ever actually in a position for it to become dangerous, you're going to get more information about what it actually is. And it might be very, very different than what your brain initially told you. And this doesn't just apply to people with dogs or walkers on a sidewalk. Our brain is predicting everything in our future. When we think and set plans and when we're actually in the world and taking steps. That's what a brain does. It makes predictions. And then we have feelings that arise in us that cause us to move away or towards. So before you let those feelings guide your direction, take a few more steps, get a little bit more information, and you might be surprised at what you find there. It might be the opposite of what your brain actually predicted. So I hope there's some value in there for you. And let me know in the comments below what you think. Has this happened to you before? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, come on, peeps, what are you waiting for? And if you want to keep me in this conversation, come on over to Patreon, a buck or two a month, and you support me in producing more content like this, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, I'll see you soon.